Hello everyone and welcome. We are back on another episode of Queen Mary's Lost and Abandoned Places. I'm joined by my friend Stephen Ablonsi. Say hello. Hello everybody. And so yeah, it's been a while. Oh, let me turn off this background thing. And so it it has been a while since we've done one of these, and so I'm actually really excited to get back into it. Um, and today we will be focusing on third class. So let's see, where's the um, this thing? Here we go. So I brought up a picture of the Queen Mary's um, uh, cutaway profile view, and third class is all the way forward of the ship on the superstructure. This staircase here is the first thing we'll be focusing on, so I will get the first picture of that out. Uh, and let's see, is there anything I needed to say? Oh, yes, uh, for those who are just, who are new here, um, usually the way this goes is I do read your comments to see if there's something I can answer, but because this is kind of like a lecture series, uh, we don't focus so much on everybody's comments, but I am reading them, uh, just to see if there's something I could respond to, but hello everybody, just in case. <laughs> All right. So here is our first picture. So Steve, do you want to, uh, kind of explain what we're, well, actually, actually, before we show that picture, Okay. Can you pull up um, the uh, main deck deck plan with the the lounge and the staircase that's shown in there? Yes. So let's see. Uh, <clears throat> is there and, a, spe and what? a specific deck plan, or can I use? Uh, it was it was one of the ones that I sent you. It's, it's okay. the one from the from the passenger deck plan. Okay. It shows okay. the garden lounge. It shows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Okay. Here we go. All That'll right. work. Okay. So before I go into describing this, just to, uh, for those of you that may not know, the Queen Mary is divided into three classes. Third class is at the forward end of the ship. Second class is at the stern of the ship. And first class is what we call midships, right in, right in the middle of the ship. And there are reasons for that. Um, first class definitely got the best riding, less noise, less vibration part of the of the ship, which would be right in the middle. The stern of the ship uh, is still as wide. You had a lot of lounges that covered the full width of the ship and uh, going all the way to the curvature of the stern. But when you start to go forward, um, the Queen Mary is built like a banana. Uh, it's what we call a shear to deck. Uh, it basically curves upward at the stern and, and curves even more dramatically upward at the bow. And, and that, yeah, you can kind of see that. It, it doesn't look so much in the drawing, but when you start walking on the decks, oh, you can definitely see it. Yeah, as you start to go lower in the decks, um, it's even more uh, profound. Uh, and this was to give the ship strength while being able to bend in the water so that the while the Queen Mary was riding the waves, if you had a high point of a wave at the stern and a high point of the wave at, at the bow, you're going to have the lower end, the trough end of the between the waves in the middle of the ship. So the ship would definitely have to bend up and down at the bow and the stern. So the ship is bent or built with a curve or a shear uh, to allow her to bend that way. And so the third class accommodations got placed at the bow because it is it gets a little bit more narrow as you start to get to the knife point of the bow. And you have the you have the angle or the the shear to the deck that becomes a little bit more of a of a nuisance <laughs> if you're not used to walking on on uh, angled floors it's uh it gets to you sometimes uh so that's the reason why third class was placed forward and the only outside deck that the third class passengers got at least in the very first few years was at the bow so if you wanted to go out and get some fresh air, maybe play some some deck games like quoits or or shuffleboard, 
um, that was all on uh, on main deck and a deck in the well area of the ship at the bow. Um, and that was it. That's all you got. And that would only be available to you if the weather was good and uh, uh, the ship wasn't uh, experiencing any kind of headwinds. And if it was too windy, they would also close. It didn't necessarily have to be bad weather. But if she had a she had a strong headwind, um, they would also close that that area off to uh, passengers. So sometimes you if you were in third class, you could spend the entire voyage inside without actually seeing seeing the uh, outside sky or the sun or clouds, uh, unless you were able to peek out a portal. So yeah, so let's go back to that main deck. Okay. So you'll see that there's a there's a double staircase that's there, and there are two sets of doors that lead out onto what they call their their promenade. Um, and yet, yeah, if you didn't know it, those pieces of machinery that are in a circle there at the forward end of that deck, those are all the the winches for the crane, uh, for the uh, the multiple uh, uh, cargo cranes to lift and uh, remove cargo from the holds. So they had to share that deck space with the machinery. Um, but there was enough room out there for uh, several sets of uh, of shuffleboard and, and coits. Mm -hmm. um, those were storm doors, so they were basically like a, a heavy shell door in addition to an entry door. Um, and in bad weather, uh, those were definitely sealed up tight. Mm -hmm. uh, because you are at the forward end, you would often have waves that would crest over the bow. And that, in, in, in some cases, um, this area of the ship could even be actually underwater. That's, it's kind of hard to imagine. <laughs> but uh, but this, this area of the ship was on an occasion actually this, below the water level. This curvature yeah. here to deflect the waves, huh? Right. That's exa that's basically how, or the, the reason why the whole forward superstructure is curved that way. The well deck is actually designed to try and break that wave up to get it to deflect outward. Um, it doesn't work as well. <laughs> um, it wasn't like they were expecting it to be, which is the reason why they didn't even put it in in the design on the Queen Elizabeth. They they eliminated the uh, the well deck. And, uh, and on Queen Elizabeth, most of her docking machinery was placed uh, one deck below in the covered area so that you didn't even have it um, exposed. Um, <clears throat> so this was your, if you wanted to go outside and uh, have some exercise or, or play games, it was through this area on main deck. And this staircase here, let's go ahead and go show that staircase. This, oh, the... So the, the yeah, that Picture. staircase. Let's show the photograph of. Okay. Uh... Oh yeah, here we go. Oh no, that's the wrong deck. Does it matter what deck of the stairs I show? Nah, nah. Just just show one picture of it because it's pretty much about the same. It's like the same on, on each every deck. deck, right? Okay. Yeah. So this is the main this is the main third class stairway and it leads from main deck all the way down through A B R formerly C and then uh, D now currently C deck and then it actually continued down to D deck although it wasn't a double staircase on D deck it was uh, just a single staircase um, and those are all still there even though you as a tourist or guest on board can't access a good portion of the staircase um, below R, it's still there. And I believe we're looking at, uh, this is our deck, isn't it? Looking up to B? I think it is, yes. Yeah, okay. So unlike the, uh, the second and first class staircases that were tiered, the third class staircases were a straight shot up and down. And this this staircase is actually the cause of one of the uh, the 56 recorded deaths on board. 
Uh, I don't have the details to it. I believe it was a steward who was on the upper deck. And as the ship pitched upward during during bad weather, fell down while the staircase was literally, uh, you know, straight up and down perpendicular. And and. It, right. Your fit. Yeah, that's right. Yes, exactly. So, I mean, it's amazing that there was only one death at this staircase because I'll tell you, I have, um, I have tripped on this staircase personally, and and fell about maybe about a third of the way down. And of course, this is you know, in Long Beach, sitting still, you know, no no pitching up and down. Um, I don't like this staircase. <laughs> I actually avoid this staircase. I don't like climbing up and going up and down it. Um, oh, I, I was on mute when I told people <laughs> that thing. Um, uh, oh, <laughs> sorry. So what I had said just real quick was, was uh, when, was when the ship would pitch upwards, uh, like, you know, when it's cresting a wave, uh, these stairs, they face aft right now where this image is looking, it's looking aft of the ship. So right. when the ship pitches, upwards uh when it's going over a wave these stairs become almost vertical and so steve was agreeing that you know that's how people tripped yeah and you know you 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 can imagine you know looking down that staircase in this photograph um that's a fairly steep staircase i mean it's it's not ab abnormally steep for you know for our, the general public to use otherwise we wouldn't be seeing the the public use it today um but Imagine the bow of the ship lifting up out of the ocean while riding up on a wave. That staircase would be a straight vertical shot down to the lower deck with nothing to break your fall on the way down. So you're talking about at least 20 feet, maybe maybe even more, depending oh. upon where you landed. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we look at them today, they're carpeted, but back in the old days, let me get a... I'll just, well, I'll save that one for later. But here's an example, you know. Right. This is the bottom of, this is where our deck is today. But it, it's a hard floor today, and that's how it would have been back then. The stairs were hard, uh, wood wood stairs, and then the, the landings were all, like, a hard, um, uh, it was basically, it was like linoleum on steel, wasn't it? Yeah. L linoleum on on a rubber concrete floor on steel. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> or I should say a rubber cork concrete floor on steel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you walk around the ship today, and it's it's so squishy and carpeted, but back then it was just these hard surfaces. And so if you fell, you know, you can see why someone died. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I, you know, and even with the carpet, I mean, let's say you had a, a thin – you know, a, a cut pile type carpet on there. Um, you're still having a hard surface. It's not like it's it's softened or it has a, a you know, a uh, a cushioned padding to it. So, I, I think you're I think you're toast either way. The, the carpet just may you know soften the blow ever so slightly. Oh, in fact, these this picture shows the stairs without carpeting. Right. So that's the um, that is the staircase leading down to C deck from our deck. Oh, wow. Okay. I see. I could, oh yeah. Cause here's the wall that they added. Right. Oh. Exactly. Um, so, and, and, and in fact, um, uh, unlike most ships, in fact, I think, I think, I don't think there was any other ship until the Queen Mary that had a lift or what we call an elevator. Um, for third class, and the Queen Mary had one. I have a little and, video I'll play while you talk a little bit because I walk sure. into this area. Oh yeah, great. So this is the um, this is a deck yes. that he's on right now, and those stairs lead up to main deck, which is what we're gonna we're going to talk to. That leads up into that little foyer. 
then that would lead you to the outside, you know, outdoor deck for, for third class. But he's and... here on the uh, starboard side of A deck walking forward. And that little shiny door there is the third class lift or elevator. And now they, they use that for housekeeping. So housekeeping uses that elevator. What? Wait a minute, what? Yeah, I thought, well, I read somewhere. I think it, well, it might have been really old information, but the I read it somewhere that um, that they use, that the housekeeping uses that lift for, uh, well, for the, just the, them. The car, no, no, it doesn't function. Oh, it, it doesn't? It doesn't function, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the car itself is on our deck. In fact, you can see it um, when you go on the tour. They have the elevator door open, and you can look inside the car. Oh, okay. Uh, back in, I think it was 97 or 98, um, a friend of mine and I, that we, when we were both still working on board, uh, we, we kind of took a little project to, uh, of our own uh, on inspecting the elevators, all, all the lifts on board. We wanted to see if there was any kind of recent, you know, Long Beach era obstruction, like a, a the air vent duct or uh, conduits or anything that was obstructing the shaft to prevent the elevator or lift from ever being used again unless th- those items were removed. Um, this lift has obstructions in it. So unless those obstructions are removed, this lift could never be reused um, and, and function. Oh, I see. The, the ones that are all, like, in first class and second class that aren't being used uh, have no obstructions to them. And, and uh, they were actually looking at putting back in, in service some of the uh, elevators in, in first class, but uh, it just never was able to happen. So these doors that you see that lead... Uh, yeah, we can go back just a little bit. Well, you know what? We're we're jumping ahead of ourselves. So let's are. go back up to let's go to main deck. <laughs> okay. Let me... Oh, how easy we jump off track. <laughs> I know it's it gets it's because we get so excited talking about all this stuff. Yep. Okay. okay. So the very the highest most deck for passenger space for third class on the Queen Mary was main deck. And this is the the garden lounge. It was considered the main lounge for third class. And uh, can we go into some of the pictures? Yes. Uh, there we go. This would now be what's called the Mauritania room on board. Mm-hmm. And it was a, although it was not called a winter garden, it was supposed to basically resemble a winter garden. In like an English English mansion, English house. Um, oh, that's a nice shot. And, uh, there's a, in fact, it's a, like an English courtyard uh, marquetry panel, which we'll we'll talk about here in a minute. And um, folks, your eyes do not deceive you. The floor is slanted. <laughs> the floor is slanted. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, now, it's very interesting because they used to do dancing in here. I would not want to be dancing on a on a raised, you know, angled floor. Yeah, <laughs> perfect, perfect lead in. That's wonderful. Yeah, that is taken in the uh, in the garden lounge. Um, obviously, not a very large room. Uh, and they 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 didn't have an orchestra. Obviously, they had a small band. But uh, I'm gonna show them the the color photo. Oh yeah. So I, you know, the, the wicker. Although it looks like they've removed some of the wicker chairs and tables to kind of give you more of a. This is another one of those rooms I was talking about in the last, um, in the last uh, episode that we had done. You know that that really didn't see much change. You know between pre-war, wartime, and post-war. Um, I don't know what the what the garden lounge was used for during the war. I would assume that it was probably bunk space. Yeah. Um, but uh, it didn't change very much. I believe it got new flooring uh, post-war. 
but uh, you know the the uh, the 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 actual style of the decor itself did not change uh, throughout her entire career. And okay, so do you want to talk about this panel here? Yeah. Well, actually, you know, let's go back to um, before we go to the marketry panel. Um, uh, let's see here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's. Yeah. I guess we can. Yeah. Show that bedroom display. Okay. So this is kind of the case of the disappearing, reappearing artwork. Um, <laughs> When the uh, Queen Mary came to Long Beach, this is the uh, English courtyard uh, marquetry panel that was in the third class garden lounge. It was removed for unknown reasons from the lounge and placed in the first class stateroom display, which was on a deck. And we'll, we'll get into that later. So here's a photograph of the stateroom exhibit. Uh, on a deck with the marquetry panel i think it was about uh 96 maybe 90 well maybe 95 96 somewhere around that time when the uh the uh stateroom exhibits were taken out of the a deck uh lounge and again we'll talk about it in a little bit and luckily we had a person that was uh the historian, archivist, I'm not quite sure exactly what you would consider him, um, uh, who still had a good amount of of uh, pride and, and love for the ship. Uh, unfortunately, there's been some that have not had that kind of uh, attitude for the Queen Mary. And he felt that when the exhibit was gone you know taken out that the marketry panel should go back into the lounge and so it did it is now back in the garden lounge now the the mauritania room this is the lounge I, that exists I don't know. today yeah it's pretty much how it exists today um but we're facing away from the marketry panel so you can't really we see are this yeah we're, we're facing we're facing forward on this um you can see there are two little display cabinets and in addition to those display cabinets, there were two extruding cabinets that came out. Here's and a... and there we go. There is one of the cabinets right there. There was another one that just like it uh, over behind our view of it. Um, unlike the first class in the main hall and some portions of second class that actually had a shop that you could walk into to buy uh, souvenirs, uh, this was the shop for third class. It was all on display in the cabinets. And if you were wanting to purchase a, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, a, a Cupid doll, a Cunard Cupid doll, or, or a, uh, um, a, a, a souvenir tea set, uh, it would be on display in these cabinets here. And you would ask for a, uh, you would ask a steward to, uh, to bring you one, and I guess it would be brought to your cabin. And yeah, you can see a lot of the items on display there. Those cabinets... The, uh, if you look really carefully, these yes. are the, oh, the dolls. The, there's, yeah, there's the Cupid dolls. Yeah. The little sailor... <laughs> Those things are famous, you guys. The little sailor Cupid dolls that have the little sailor hat that says Queen Mary on it. Yeah, not to, I, mean, I mean, not just for Cunard. I mean, almost every ship yeah. had a similar doll with the ship's name on it in a little sailor outfit. With the little eyes, um, oh, my mom told me that I say Cupid, but it's not a Cupid doll. It's um, there's a name for the the doll's eyes going off to one side. Anyways, it cre creeps me out. I'm I'm not a doll it, yeah. person. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm neither. laughs> but those cabinets that extruded out um, were removable. And can you go to that one picture taken in the seventies? Yes. Here we go. So there's the two cabinets. Um, sitting side by side, this is somewhere, uh, I believe, in the engine room exhibit area. This was like a little like snack bar lounge. Looks like they got extra chairs from the, um, what is it, uh, Lord Nelson's. 
which was which is now the Promenade Cafe. But yeah, Lord Nelson's a horrible, des- you know, arc- um, decor, horrible decor. Anyways, that's another story. <laughs> yeah. But here's but here's those two. Um, uh, they are. Um, oh, what's the name of the wood? It's uh, Palm Palmamello. Palm, Palm, oh, I better get my notes. That's why I'm, <laughs> this is what I get for not having my notes in front of me. Uh, let's see here. Pomelli. They're panel and Pomelli. The, uh, the room itself, I believe, is Sycamore. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, so these two, just, I, I know of one. I do not know if both still exist on board or not. Um, can you go to the... Yeah. Art room. So there's one of the cabinets that was placed on display uh, in the art exhibit that was on our deck. This is in the fir- former first, uh, former third class dining room. You can just see a little bit of the wood you can paneling see the, there. There's a pillar, the pillar here. Yeah. And they, they sectioned it off with like white walls. Right. So yeah, it was part of the third class dining room. Right. What I found interesting is that, you know, the all the classes' main lounges are some of the biggest rooms on the ship, mm-hmm. and the smoking rooms are a little smaller. Now, mm-hmm. was it that third class passengers smoke more? Because what we'll be getting to next is the third class smoking room, which is actually like a room almost twice the size of what is supposed to be the main lounge for third class. I've never been able to figure that one out. Third class are heavy smokers, I guess, chain smokers. They might've been, or just, well, cause just you know what? more of them. Cause you know what? Sm- smoking in the higher class, like especially the upper, upper class folks was really more of a, a social thing, but that's it, true. But then in third class, it was like, it was just so casual. It's just like you walk down the street, you light up a cigarette, you know? So that is true. Yeah. <laughs> so they probably did smoke a little bit more. They were probably chain smokers. So. Chain smokers. And I, and I guess maybe just more of them on a regular basis. Whereas you, you know, first class passengers, you know, they might've been like an after dinner cigar type of smoking, not necessarily cigarettes, but yeah. Uh, um, let's see. Was there anything else that we, need? Oh, um, an interesting note to make about, the garden lounge and the foyer uh, with the staircase is that yes. uh, directly above that space would be the observation bar. Mm-hmm. And the foyer space is actually uh, right at the forward end of the raised deck of the observation bar and, and promenade deck because um, uh Oh, let me go up to the. So this is this is main deck. This is the third class garden lounge. There's the yeah. foyer he's talking about, and then now if we go yeah. to the deck above, <clears throat> we can see the first class observation bar. There's a little um, indoor promenade that crosses between the two starboard and port promenades, and then there's an outdoor section. Right. Um. It, in this, this is a pre, a pre maiden voyage, um, nineteen thirty six deck plan. So it shows, in this shot, it shows the observation bar, um, having two separate raised platforms. And of course, later it was decided to make the entire, uh, forward end of the room, a raised, a raised deck. So you have you have a balustrade, you know, going all the way around with two little staircases, one on either side of the of the room going up but between the actual deck plate of prom deck and the raised deck that's uh, you know the observation bar floor um there's a crawl space maybe about i don't know foot and a half something like that maybe close to two feet uh big enough to actually crawl inside i don't know if i would fit in there but uh um but there was you need necessary access for um Electrical conduit uh, runs, uh, 
I guess just for checking for corrosion. Um, but there's an access hatch in on main deck to get up into that crawl space. Oh, in in the garden lounge uh, area. I'm not sure. I, I know it's there. I cannot remember if it's in the garden lounge or if it's in the foyer. I I think it's in the garden lounge. But there's actually a, a there's actually a little steel hatch that you can open open the deck up and crawl up into that crawl space onto the in, on the prom deck. Wow. Yeah, that's something I definitely did not expect to hear. <laughs> yeah. And while you've got that up, let's go ahead and talk a little bit. Um, 1963, the Cunard line was suffering from dramatic drops in passengers. And that was actually quite a few of them were, were lost in first class passenger uh, 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 ticket sales. Um but long, or but Long Beach, Cunard actually realized that they had a, they had to try and dig up as much business as they possibly could, and they they learned that middle class families still could not afford transatlantic air travel. It was still a little bit above their means in cost. So Cunard expanded third class by adding more cabins, giving them a little bit more in outdoor space, and giving them more in lounge space. And the observation bar, which we were just talking about, which was, for most of its career, you know, a highlight of the first-class public rooms, actually became a third-class lounge. And... For third-class passengers to be able to get up to prom deck, uh, which they ha did not have access before, the forward first-class staircase was actually given to third class. And so in this deck plan that we see here, this is showing the forward first-class staircase with the two elevators. Um, and this was their access to the observation bar. They also were given more cabin space on A and B decks. Uh, so this staircase also served the A and B deck areas uh, for third class cabins. That's probably when the the area that that came before room B three forty had become third class cabins. Yeah. See. See. That's um. Yeah. B three forty. Yeah. B. Oh, I won't get into B three forty. Um. Yeah. B three the the area where the quote unquote B three forty cabin is is first class accommodation that went to third class so what was there uh before 63 uh completely changed after 63 and you know i can't get anybody to ever explain to me well did this did this murder suicide take place you know in first class or did it you know because the space of b340 is actually like two cabins it's it's not one cabin. It was actually two cabins during third class. So you know, and there was a public restroom there, I believe, uh, right on the corner by the hall. Yeah, I think in, when it was first class, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, believe it or not, there were there were some first class cabins that did not have um, their own private commodes. They had sinks, but they did not have a bathroom, and those were mainly for. Um, personal servants, you know, servants quarters. Uh, if you were a first class passenger and you brought along your own ballot or your own maid, um, those were the cabins that they would give, you know, that they would assign to those uh, uh, to to the personal uh, servants of the passengers. Mm -hmm. And so that yeah, there were public restrooms, little little stalls of bathrooms, and there were also showers and 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 bath tubs that uh, you could get a um a steward to set you up with a you know shower time or a bath time mm -hmm. um but they did also sell them to passengers if you wanted a a lower fared first class uh cabin let's see was there anything else i think we can actually move on down to adac 
Was there anything you can think of a main deck that we should cover? Main deck, main deck. Um, I don't think so. I think we covered everything about main decks, garden lounge, and the all that. So yeah, let's move yeah. on to the next one. So let me exit out of some of these. Uh, I I, I definitely want to cover uh, clarify something. A lot of the third class lounge spaces, and I think it's more of the B deck lounges, and we'll we'll cover those last. But um, a lot of those portals um, actually have bars over them, and uh, uh, something that tour guides used to tell guests on on their tours was that during World War II, these areas were converted to prisoner of war detention cells and that the bars over the portholes were obviously to prevent a prisoner of war uh, occupant from being able to escape out of you know and, you know either i i don't know where they're gonna go if they're on a ship but yeah in the middle um, of you know the ocean <laughs> yeah that that whole idea is completely false uh, the the bars on portholes if you see a bar a set of bars on porthole or in some cases there was like a um a wire mesh screen mm -hmm. that was attached to the outside um to prevent you from being able to actually like get your your head out of the porthole that was a good reason if you notice wherever you see those kinds of 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 fixtures set up with a portal um it is usually near mooring lines mm -hmm. and they did not want a passenger or a crew member somebody who was you know curious as to what was going on sticking their head out a portal just at the moment a mooring line snaps or brushes alongside the, the hull or 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 in, in some cases in those forward areas where you've got the cargo cranes operating you know, there's always a possibility of, of a cargo, um, uh, you know, a, a pallet of stuff being swung, you know, swung out and it, it's, you know, uncontrollable. It could hit the side of the of the superstructure. It was for protection of people not being injured by sticking their head out the portal. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. I, I would I, I would cringe every time I heard. A tour guide say that it just uh it yeah anyways so, somewhere along the line it's, it happened at disney too when i worked there somewhere somewhere along the line someone thought this makes the most plausible sense i'm just gonna start telling people that and then it becomes a thing you but, mean there was fake news at disneyland shocking i know <laughs> <laughs> so this is the third class staircase we just finished talking about main deck with the garden lounge now we're going down to a deck what would you like me to show them first um, how about let's show the hairdressing salon? Cool. I have one photo of it. <laughs> All right. And we're lucky to have that one photo of it. So here's the uh, third class uh, men's and women's hairdressing salon. Uh, the second and first class hairdressing salons were separated by sex. So you had a men's uh you know, Ben's Barbershop, and then you had a women's hairdressing salon. Uh, this was unisex. And I would assume that's probably why you had a privacy curtain in between the two uh, bays here. Uh, obviously, there's really nothing different between the two. It looks like they've got all the same amount of equipment. Uh, you've got the the sink and, and the cabinets and everything. Uh, and I believe this was the case in all the hairdressing salons. You would think that in today's uh, oh, pricing of, of material in, when it comes to decor, um, when you think of plastic and formica, what do you what, you think cheap? Mm -hmm. It's something that's it's you know formica cab you know countertops. Nah, you, you don't want formica cabinets or countertops. You want you want granite. You want marble. Um, plastic material, definitely cheap. Mm -hmm. Not in 1936. 
1936 Formica and plastic were very expensive. Mm -hmm. And that is why you find a lot of plastic and Formica on the Queen Mary. And as you can see here, that all of that wall paneling is Formica. And if you, you know, if you ever see any of the white uh, handrails going down the passenger corridors, that's plastic. I mean, it's 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 what they call roanoid, but it's still a plastic based material. It's, um, you know, it's it, when people see those those handrails, they're like, oh god, why'd they go cheap? They went cheap. And then when they see a, a cabin in the hotel rooms that still have the formica panels, oh god, formica. You know how cheap can they go? No, it's it wasn't cheap. And I actually think that the formica panels, uh, yeah. Oh, thank you, wonderful. I I love that pattern, oh. and you you can still buy that pattern. That pattern is still available through formica. Yeah, it's it's you know when you look at this bathroom. If you're looking at it through the lens of today, you're going, "Oh, this looks like a cheap bathroom." But right, when, but you know, like like Steve said, like this, all this stuff was precious materials back then. It was like exactly. it was it was new. It was it was invented. It was it was sleek and modern. And so, yeah. you, And so, if you look at it through that kind of lens, you can really see how luxurious this bathroom really was. You know, yeah, I mean. If, if if you look at that picture right now, so let's the toilet seat and the and the toilet lid are plastic. The uh, the uh, the toilet paper holder, which it wasn't in a roll, it was in a package. That's that's that little package right there below the the flush um, handle. Yeah, that's plastic. The um, your water uh, jug uh, base holder is plastic. The toothbrush holder is plastic. The glass holder is plastic. Um, let's see what else would be plastic. Uh, the doorknobs, the doorknob on the door is plastic. Yeah. The, here, can we zoom in on yeah. the doorknob on the, the door? Locking, the locking slide bolt is plastic. And and those are all still, you know, well, at least most of the hotel rooms today still have a lot of that, those fixtures in there. Um, a lot of them were Bakelite, right? Um, it's actually, it's Roanoid. It's, Roanoid? it's, it's, it's it's white. It's kind of like a white Bakelite, but it's plastic based. It is. It is a, a form of plastic. Um, you would get the opinion that that was cheap, but, but very expensive material. Oh, even the light fixture. The light fixture is Ronoid. <laughs> it's a translucent um, diffuser uh, cover over the light bulb. Mm -hmm. and, oh, and the, and the uh, the coat hook. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was, you know, yeah, I've heard people say, you know, they walk into the, into the bathrooms of the ship or, or into other areas of the ship and they go, why is there, why is there such cheap plastic? It's like, it's not cheap. It was, it, yeah. they, they made jewelry out of, out of items like, you know, Roanoid and Bakelite. <laughs> yeah. so. and, and, I, and I'll tell you, I, going, I, I don't know, I, you know, it's been years since I've been in the hotel, but whenever I would stay on board, if I got a room, the first thing that I would do when I would go into a room is look for uh, look at the bathroom. If it was still original Formica, I was so happy. And there are still some uh, rooms in the hotel that are all all still original Formica. Mm -hmm. You'll find quite a few of them that they have some original panels of Formica with some Formica panels that have been um they've gotten a, a covering you know a decorative uh uh wallpaper placed over it probably because it, you know it cracked or it got a hole in it um but it's still there it's still pretty much original and then there are some rooms on the ship and i'm not talking about the ones that are built you know that were built new in the the 70s but um the original cabins there are still some original cabins that got redone bathrooms um and and I'm always disappointed if it's a room that has a redone bathroom. So I'm always looking for Formica. Formica is, is uh, I'm, I'm I love Formica. I'm sold on it. <laughs> he looks Formica. Yeah, I mean it's durable. It does you know it it, it doesn't easily scratch. Um, you know it, of course now 
for Micah without any kind of a laminated backing it is pretty flimsy. So, mm-hmm. you know, obviously if you took a hammer to it or something, you know, heavy, you, you can easily crack it or, um, you know, you know, you know, bust it up. But if you have a, a good enough backing behind it, um, it was pretty durable. And I don't know if anybody here knows, but I, I actually own a, a uh, 1949 railroad train car, passenger car. And although my car did not have Formica, um, in the 40s and 50s, they were using Formica paneling for interiors on railroad cars. I'm actually looking at, rather than painting some of my uh, walls in my uh, car, I'm looking at actually getting them laminated with new Formica. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, moving on. Let's go to the... uh, Let's go to the A deck. Let's go to the smoking room. Okay. Let's have a smoke. Well, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so, here is one photo of it. Yeah, you can um you can keep uh flipping, flipping you can flip through. through some different uh, pictures while I'm pulling up my notes here. I'm, let me pull up my notes. So, this smoking room was uh also on um a deck and it was forward and it's below the um garden lounge and um also below let's see uh so above this would have been the cargo cranes that would lift the um you know the the cargo and stuff and then the cargo winches would have been on the deck above so you know to this day you can walk above it and as we'll talk a little bit later you can walk in right and in fact in fact what in that photograph right there you can see that there's a there's a bulkhead to your right, right behind that uh, that big overstuffed settee, mm-hmm. and that's the number two cargo hatch. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so I like this photo here. This is I've never seen this photo before. So oh yeah, this was this is beautiful. This is the best photo that I've ever seen of the smoking room. Oh, wow. You know what? I didn't realize what? that. Okay. So the hunting scene marquetry panel is vi- visible in this um, photograph here. This is the only piece of artwork that was in this room. Um, you had the English courtyard in the garden lounge. This is the hunting scene in the A deck smoking room. And there it is right there. Huh. And that, well, to make a long story short, this room, this is a lost place. This lounge, as you know, for all practical purposes, no longer exists. There are the outside wood paneling of the room that still exists, but the room itself, the lounge itself, is is gone. Mm-hmm. But that marquetry panel lives on today. And it is in the A deck lobby lounge, um, off the hotel lobby on the starboard side. Oh, okay. Oh, I. Let me see. Hold on. I might have footage of that. You said oh, starboard okay. side. Yeah, you know the the lobby bar and the and the little A deck lounge that's on the starboard side with the glass cell door areas. I will try to see if I have it. It has okay. ducks, right? No, 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 no. That's the other marquetry panel. That's from one of the um, suites on main deck. Oh, I was thinking of this one here. Yeah. So that's that's the um, yeah the ducks in flight marquetry panel uh, that came from what is now the royal the royal suite M one oh eight M one ten I think. Oh darn! Well, that's all I have of this area. I didn't, you know, oh, I was so dumb I, because I was walking this way, and I didn't think because there's a bulkhead here, and I didn't think right. there was anything beyond that. I honestly didn't. What? I just, yeah. I mean, there is, but I just, for some reason, my mind saw a wall here, so I didn't think there was anything beyond that I could have looked. And your your mind needs glasses. It does. <laughs> my mind needs glasses. <laughs> Uh, so in that photo dump that I gave you before our mm-hmm. stream here, um, I there is a picture of it, it from that A deck lounge. 
Uh, would it be this one? Yes, there we go. That's so that is on the forward end of the little A deck lobby lounge. And, and the lobby bar. And it's marquetry, folks. That means that it's all made of uh, decorative woods that were stained and put together. And and I'll tell you, this is something that's very interesting. So this marquetry panel um, is probably the most pristine, original-looking marquetry panel on board. And I'll tell you why. This was removed... Uh, probably early 70s. It, it, I don't know if it was removed before the ship was moved, was towed to Pier J, or if it was done after Pier J, but very early on in its Long Beach years. So it wasn't subjected to the the re varnished, re lacquered, you know, areas of other marquetry panels that are on board. You see how there are blues. Blues and greens and reds and it, yeah, those are all you know different stains to different woods, but you can see those colors. Most marquetry panels on the ship today have been, um, they've been relacquered. Um, in some cases, they've been lacquered over lacquered, um, and they've lost the color. The the lacquer has has turned yellow, mm -hmm. so the color is gone. Um, the the English courtyard one in main on main deck in the garden lounge is not bad, but it is yellowing. This one still, you can still see those blues, reds, greens. It's the only one on board that is like that. Oh, um, shall we can go back? Well, wait, here's go back to that, that picture, that previous picture, um, of the lounge. Okay. Right. So there is that same marquetry panel. Can you zoom in at all? Yeah. There's the same marquetry panel. This is on the starboard. I'm sorry. On the port side, looking aft mm -hmm. in the a deck smoking room. And there's the hunter there. There's the dogs. There's the horse. Right. Yeah. So unfortunately, this room was was pretty much gutted uh, in the early '70s. It became the stateroom exhibit. <laughs> Let's, let me let me let me see if I can list this off. Stateroom exhibit, fire station exhibit, watertight door exhibit. Can you name another one, Alex? <laughs> what else was in there? <laughs> <laughs> well, and in the later years, the Kennard story. Um, let's see what else was what, what else has been played. Oh, the the exit to um, the gift shop to the Ghosts and Legends tour. Um, yeah, this is what from the Kennard story. This one, no, no. Oh, I do have footage of the Kennard story though. Oh, um, you can show that real quick, I guess. Okay, uh, let's see. Where are we at in time? Oh, okay. We're at three o'clock. Uh, where is my? It's one of these files here, and I, I can't remember which one. It, 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 it's a good example of showing you that there is nothing original to the room, other than the out, the outside uh, bulkheads. You know, the to the superstructure. The shell plate of the super superstructure. That's the only area where you have original wood paneling from the lounge, or from the smoking room. The interior, um, even the um, the bulkhead that surrounds the uh, the cargo hatch, is not original. However, the exiting uh, elevator for the Ghosts and Legends tour comes up through the uh, cargo hatch, the number two cargo hatch, and and the door that leads out um, from comes into this lounge now. Mm -hmm. Is that in there? That, yep, that's it. Because uh, when we took our, our – um, well, we took 
our tour through um we did an engine room tour mm-hmm. and um well not engine room the the you know engineering tour and they the, had yeah. us wait here and then they opened the door and in there was a little foyer into the the big elevator that they added into the cargo right. hatch so we yeah. had to so so that 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 wall there is basically the forward uh bulkhead of the number 2 cargo hatch Yeah, I never actually got a chance to go on board during the uh, Cunard story. It's, you know, it's pretty okay, but I kind of expected a little bit more. It was very much, oh, I was obsessed with Walt Disney, so. Um, (laughs) (laughs) It was very much, um, where is it? Uh, What do you call it? Like a a commercial for their... Mm -hmm company and i i you know that makes sense but i kind of expected more stuff you know more... it was it was sponsored by cunard wasn't it it was yes yes okay. so this is very and it was very much advertising for their new ship so this is these what? three you know so... i i i mean from what from the pictures and the and and from your video I, i'm impressed with with how it looked it looked like a pretty good display yeah but um i don't know i kind of I kind of expected more models, you know, of other ships, more history about other ships. It was really just, it was really a, a, it briefly touched upon the history of Cunard with, uh, oh, you can't see it, but there was, there, there was like a wall panel there that talked about like the history of Samuel Cunard and his company. And that was kind of it. But um, I'm going to show you guys now um, the other part. Oh, you know what? Before you, do, before you go anywhere, let's, let's, uh, let me really quickly point out. So that is a, um, well, it's some kind of a hatch. I'm not sure what the hatch is for. I'd have to look at the deck plan. But that still has original paneling from the lounge. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm actually surprised. I didn't think that any of the hatches had original paneling, but that that one does. Well, you know, okay. there is something odd about this, which is if if I go back to the pictures. Mm-hmm. of this room you don't really yes. you don't really see this here uh i think there's a wall room. i think there's a wall that's up against oh, no, it there it is so this is this is where that is i'm gonna move that yeah that. it's it's part of a open uh hatch hatch that uh, was paneled originally yeah you can see there were i think there were three um hatches that that led up through the room that were paneled and and that is one of them right there. Yeah, you're right. Could it? Oh, I know what it is. I know. I know what it is. I'm so I'm so dumb. Uh, this is the this is the ventilation. Um, so if you so this so you know the 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 two um what do they call those uh, cowl vents that are up uh. What, what oh right right above on, the garden lounge on the outside the the ones that are forward of the observation bar yes so i'm pretty sure that th- this one here and this one here are for those cowl vents i maybe. think you're right or i think you might be right well no actually these the cargo cranes would be right here so there is a cowl vent uh on either side but those are like oh the... yeah they're um they're the they're the mushroom ones the ones that had the little mushroom tops on them I've, there's yes. a name for them but i can't remember what it is and i have footage of that too um oh you are you are so handy with your video there they are the two mushroom vents yeah so here's the here's one mushroom vent here's the other mushroom vent the the mast is in the middle which explains uh which explains this. Ah, yes, exactly. And then, um, and then the, but I was originally incorrect about the cowl vents. Cause these, these, these ones I was talking about, but yeah, those are a little more can... aft, but yeah. you, I mean, you, Hey, you were close. <laughs> yeah. Those are still, they are still for ventilation. And I figured they were ventilation, but I, I, you know, I couldn't in my mind remember whether or not there was any kind of like a, 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 a vent, uh, you know, like a cowl <laughs> vent or something there. But I mean, but yeah, pointed it out. The, those two little mushroom vents are right there. 
Yeah. And since Bingo. we're since we're here, folks, you can see the n the number two cargo hatch, and in the middle is a little shed for the machinery of the elevator that they installed um, just right. just a couple decades ago. So there's that. But um, we should really get back to this. <laughs> so. <laughs> um smoking room um oh so well while while you're there yeah smoking room so you can see in this drawing here where the uh, barbershop was oh yes right there yeah and you know what and it looks like i can't read what that is i'm not sure what that third room the one on the starboard side leads to there's some I wish we had a I need a I need a 19 anybody want to send me a 1963 or later uh tourist class deck plan I, I would love it <laughs> I need to get one people always tell uh, me Alex you're too obsessed with you know sharp and high quality images and I go this is why because I can't yeah, see anything exactly. <laughs> they're always yeah. like oh you're too you're too obsessed with sharp quality image I'm like I because I need to see what's going on like uh, yeah, when the when the world of of scanners and all that came out to to, to people, you know, in the masses, um, they were, you know, they they had a, obviously the ability to set a, like a high resolution setting or a low resolution setting. Well, the high resolution setting, you're talking about several megs, you know, <laughs> per file, whereas you know a low resolution setting is like a couple of k, you know, kilobits versus megabits. Yeah. Um, and obviously they didn't want to use up their hard drive space. Ah, we'll just go with the low resolution. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a problem when you go with the low resolution, and this would be why. Yep. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, let's see if there was anything. Um, oh well, just to uh, go with the um, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, lounge, the smoking room on 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 a deck was similar to the entryways and the staircases oak mostly oak uh lart uh, light and dark paneled oak alternating panels um as far as like vertical or, or horizontal uh in the grain um i'll show is that the uh hmm? yeah there we go oh yeah so you can you can see these which are still there today um you saw right. it in my little video but, and those uh, are those are original right there we see uh, and you can see the uh, looks like the bar the uh, cocktail bar oh that's the right. cocktail bar yeah yeah mm -hmm. there it is I didn't even know this had a cocktail bar yeah and you see those those um chairs with the um quarter circle armrests uh, the, yeah you're yeah you're, you're well not those this the, one the, yeah uh-huh Oh, yeah. There's actually several of those on board. I thought so. I thought yeah, I've seen them. Very recognizable by those by those armrests. Wow. You know, believe it or not, I would say that there is more second and third class furniture on board than there is first class. As far as what's in storage. Now, that could be because they didn't sell the second and third class as much. You know, it wasn't as popular during the, um, you know, the uh, the big uh, auction sales that they had in the, in the late 60s or early, early 70s. Um, but you know what? That's, you know, that's a good thing. I'm glad to have it on board. I don't like the conditions that they're necessarily in or, or how they're being treated, but they're on board. So we're seeing more of the. Uh, this I think is, yeah, this is before the Cunard story exhibit. This is a different kind of exhibit. It's a World War II exhibit of some kind, but. Oh, okay. But you can still. Is, see this wasn't the... part. Was this part of the? Uh... Oh, this is the Churchill exhibit. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. There's Winston there and him there painting. Mm -hmm. This is the one where his um, I think his son, son or grandson came out to um dedicate um, yeah. now the cunard story was the one that was there when the queen mary closed in uh, you know prior to covid so it'll be 
you know, there ha- I I have no idea whether or not Cunard intends to continue to. Oh, I have no idea if even the city of Long Beach continues to show the exhibit, or what kind of condition the exhibit is in, um, for the Cunard story. Mm-hmm. Uh, October first is supposed to be the date of opening. However, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, there were, it, it is going to all be a, a wait and see as far as what what portions of the ship are open to the public and what's going to be available to the public when it when it does open uh there is also another area of this so today if you were to walk through this doorway here there would Mm -hmm. be a hallway and to the right is the cunard story exhibit and then um and then to the left would be the fire exhibit and I'll show that ah, yeah. real briefly. Uh, I have the pictures, but I'm thinking maybe I'll just show the video. Okay. Uh, that one. Ah, here we go. So this is that hallway I was talking about. They built a hallway in the middle of the room. And if you go left, you enter the fire exhibit. Shows the suppression systems. You can see the slant in the floor, by the way. Because that's level, but this right. walkway I'm standing on is not level. They hauled one of these massive um, <laughs> uh, watertight doors up here. <laughs> so they brought it all the way up from God knows where. Put it up here. Well, life uh, um, watertight door 38 would... would would tend to be a upper deck uh, door, probably from C deck. Probably from C deck. Hmm. You know, that, that watertight door that's on display actually used to function. You can still see that there are copper lines for the hydraulic system that was set up to make the door function, at, you know, to open and close. And it used to be, you know, you know, uh, demonstrated to the public at one point. Oh. Um, there was something I, you know, what, I'm gonna have to go all the way back to the beginning, because, uh, so I'm gonna let this play until it stops right where I want it to stop. Uh, yes, yes. Show them the floor. Okay, sorry, my friend is standing right there. But um, <laughs> behind him, you see a bulkhead here. There's an exhibit uh, right, literally right behind his head. And then there's another bulkhead there. And th- these are the originals, but the, the reason why I stopped there is because that's what was behind these. There were these bulkheads. And so, right. and so that's exactly what he's standing in front of on the other side, but yeah, just wanted to show that to people. And that's my friend. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get out of the way friend. <laughs> yeah. And then those are those bulkheads there. Yeah. Yeah. Now uh, I'd have to look at a structural diagram of, of what's set up there. I'm wondering whether or not those little webbed um, bulkhead sections are, are for webbing for structural support of the of the um shell plate or if there was a specific you know passenger comfort design to to give you these little private coves these little secluded sections if you notice you know between you know obviously they are some of them are definitely like webbings for um uh you know for like a um a, a, a vertical girder for, for support of the bulkhead. But those little sections with the couches that you were just pointing out, mm-hmm. those are obviously way too deep, way too deep into the, into the room Yeah, to be structural. And, and unless they are, because I've, you know, I've never looked at the structural design of it. You know, I to, mean, I'll have to check and see if you really consider it, the waves could have been crashing against this part. So you're right. You know, maybe they just felt that it needed significant support. The bulkhead, uh, the circular bulkhead 
just so that way if a wave crashed into it it just didn't uh you know didn't harm anything you know although you would you would think that that the the most forward end you know the the portion between those two stair staircases um would have had the, the the largest support because that's taking the brunt of the of the crashing wave into the into the superstructure whereas as it you know you go off to the side to the porter starboard side you don't have as much stress on that shell plate as you would forward because it's it's running off to the side Mm -hmm. so i'm more inclined to say that that the those are more for the the privacy because i mean look i mean isn't that a, a cool place to just hang out? You're you're kind of secluded. You've got a little, you know, a little privacy bulkhead on either side with a nice sofa, a table, and a couple of chairs. If you wanted to have a, a very private moment with with you know friends or, or or fellow passengers, those are the nice little little cubby holes to to hide out in. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. I, I I love I love how they did that all the way around. Like you've got you've got larger areas that have like a little you know like three or four couches and a couple of settees mixed with the with the tables and the chairs that surround it, and then you've got those little private ones that are just for like four people. Yeah, it is pretty cool when you uh, think about it because they they took a big is. space. And they were able to break it up without literally breaking it up. Right, right, exactly. All right, well, we should we, move on. <laughs> we should move on, yes. Okay. Uh, let's see, was there anything else on any deck that we needed to... Oh, uh, well, again, um, now, if you noticed, now, today, there are doors that lead out into the well deck. It, it, where it says promenade here on this on this deck plan... There's a square in the middle. That is the number one or the, the forward cargo hatch. Um, and that is the well deck. Well, yeah, we're looking out. Yeah. Oh, these doors right here. These are not original doors. Mm-hmm. These doors were not here, but they are now. And this leads out onto the well deck. Originally, you would have needed to be out up one deck higher on main deck and come down the uh, one of the two staircases that led down to the well deck. And you can see how that sweeps up. See how that has that yeah, that, that forward upward, upward sweep, right? That is to direct the wave that has that has broached the uh, breached the uh, uh, the forward superstructure and divert it to off to the sides, off to this port and starboard side. Yeah, just wait till we cover the the bridge. I I love that design in the. In the railing that's supposed to make the air shoot up and create. Oh yeah, the, the, the yeah the little wind scoop that's <laughs> yeah. designed in there. Yeah, yeah. So this is the well deck, you guys. This would have, uh, am I correct? This would have also been for third class to explore as a promenade kind of. Yes, yes. And and off to now there were staircases that led upward onto the forecastle, and there were staircases that led up to main deck. Um. Uh, yeah, that one right there. So this is not an original staircase. This was added by Long Beach, and the uh, the bridge that leads across um, over the well deck is not original. That was added by Long Beach as well. Yes. I mean, the original staircases were removed uh, from from the ship. Hold on, I'm trying to. Ah, okay. Well, we ah, can see a... here. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's where one of them was. And it would have that's been a the starboard side. A little a wooden staircase, right? Yeah, w- well, it would have had a steel frame, but yeah, wooden wooden um wooden uh, steps themselves. Trying to... And and hand railings. Okay, so And much much steeper. <laughs> much <laughs> much steeper. steeper than the ones that are on there now, yeah. And there was another one just like it on the port side. Yeah. So, yeah, you can see that. And then, like Steve said, this bridge was added to the ship. So that way passengers didn't uh, – people exploring the ship didn't have to come down and go back up on the other side. They could just cross right. over. So I'm trying to uh, – In fact, that, that bridge is basically – okay, so there's a little churro stand. That's what it used to be, uh, like a churro stand. 
um, that's constructed there right below the bridge. Um, but that's basically covering the footprint of what was the forward uh, or number one cargo hold that would lead down into, into the cargo, the forward cargo spaces on the ship. And so obviously that bridge was not there. Those forward booms that are on the main, on the uh, foremast um, would have served the, the number one hold. Yeah. Yeah. You can see it right there. Yeah. It's all, it's squared off. Yeah. I wish I could zoom in, but it's a video. So, but yeah, you can actually see where there was a cargo hatch there. And you can see what are called deadlights. Those are those big cast steel plates that were designed to cover over the portholes in, in rough oh. weather. And, and, and you can just imagine, like I said, this, this area would, would on occasion be completely underwater. Yep. So, and would be subjected to very harsh wave activity that would, that would, uh, you know, overcome the, the bow itself and, and crash into the well deck and then, and then rush off to the sides. So there were never originally doors into this space, just the portholes. Mm hmm. I don't know what he's doing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Anything else? I don't think. I think we can. We can move on to uh, to B deck. Yeah, I think so too. Let me just Ugh, exit out of all these. Okay, so we were just doing A deck. Now we're gonna go down the staircase to one level to B deck. Let me get. Uh... Let's let's do before we do the like let's do the um synagogue and, and nursery. Fabulous. Okay, let me um... All right, we'll start with the nursery. Let me see if I do we have a a specific deck plan for that area or should I just use mm. Oh, we do, we do. We do. Here we go. Yeah, we yeah. Mhm. Mm <clears throat> Oh, right. well, actually, it, let's, yeah, let's show this first. Okay. So this was, uh, this didn't change at all during the ship's uh, seagoing career. This was pretty much as, as it was. Um, oh, and an interesting thing, this is also a 1963 or later deck plan because you can see what was first class cabins now listed as third class. All those B251. Oh, yeah. So B340 would be in that area that is now currently showing here on this uh, B230. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here's the public restroom. So you can yeah. see there's a there's a sink and there's a toilet there and a toilet there. So two stalls, yeah. a sink, yeah. staff area where currently the bed for B340 is. Right, right. And then uh, there's – this is the, the little living room area B340 has – this is the right. giant walk-in closet B340 has. So uh, I don't know what's what this is. This might still be a cabin today. Not Or, or just simply storage. Or storage, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, and so it's like, ugh, yeah, it's silly. And, and, and an interesting thing about B340. So uh, <laughs> I believe, it, I think it was Disney. Disney had set up some kind of a... Oh, an illusional effect. It was kind of a, a lit mirror thing that was supposed to show some kind of a ghostly image. Mm -hmm. And it was set up in what what will be the, the area that's marked cinema here. And um, it was set up for B340. That's what it was. It was set up for a mirror in B340. Mm. Into, the, was their, a, into their bathroom mirror? Uh, no, not in the bathroom, but into what? Where is the? I think the bed now. You know where it says staff in this, in yeah. this drawing. Yeah. So, on the other side, in the, uh, the dressing room area of the cinema, is a panel that actually leads into that into what is now B three forty, and that was that was to get to that that little fake image thing. I, I'm not even sure what it was, but I remember when I first started giving tours that uh, a friend of mine had pointed that out to me. 
I would assume that the access hatch is still there. Mm-hmm. I'll have to, you know, when I when I go back on board, hopefully, the end of the year, you'll poke I'll around. Have to peek and... in there. Yeah, <laughs> time to time to do some poking. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna cover what what are marked here is the children's playroom and the scroll room, which is the the, the synagogue. Yes. And uh, let's let's do the children's playroom first. So you'll see I come oh, down the stairs here. And today there's a, a photograph of the Queen Mary in New York. So you'll know you're at the right spot if you see this. And then I don't show it, but to the left, you can kind of see it says nursery right there. And then to the right would be, it would just be a storage closet sign, but there would, it would have been the scroll room. So should we do the nursery first? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do the nursery first. Okay. Uh... Let's do the black and white with the, uh, the Sinbad yeah. um, panels. There we go. So this is how the the room looked like uh, in 1936. Um, some of those uh, uh, pieces of furniture from the children's playroom still exist on board, including the uh, the elephant chair. Mm-hmm. I, I think at least one exists, if not uh, two of them. Yeah. And uh, let's let's show the um, the display that's the the um, that shows the blackboard. Okay. Well, the, okay. Wrong well, one. this is the, this is the post-war children's playroom. Or, there we go. There we go. Okay. So there's the same blackboard that was in that black and white photo. Yeah. Um, the as you can probably guess, the children's playroom no longer exists. The room exists, but the room decor only exists in pieces. Um, we have some of the panels on board and, and then this blackboard that was in the room and some of the pieces of furniture. Mm-hmm. Um, go back to that color one for a second. So it was pretty... I, I, Alex and I were talking about this before we started the stream. Um, so the theme to the children's playroom was Sinbad the Sailor. Now, I'm not really much into Sinbad, I don't really know a lot of the stories about Sinbad, Sin, Sinbad, <laughs> but um, the mar the I don't think they're marketry panels. I think they're just simply art, artist panels um, depicting the uh, the characters of the story. Um, they were obviously, you know, on board, but not used. So we're looking at that same chalkboard, mm-hmm. um, but the upper wood paneling that showed some of the little characters on there on, on the left and right side of that clock um, were covered up. Exactly. And the 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 artist panels of Sinbad uh, of the story of Sinbad is also covered up. You do not see them in here. You see these other panels that have been added um, but they're not visible in here. But today the at least one i think one of the sinbad uh panels is uh on display in the uh the children's playroom exhibit on prom deck but this is a post war this is probably taken in the late 50s or early 60s um it obviously got a a a uh a change post war that's that's a different flooring than it had pre war but you know the furniture stayed the same there's still the two elephant um, the two elephant chairs, which I, and I'm pretty sure there is one on prom deck today or, you know, should be there. Um, anything else you want to, can you think of on the children's playroom? I don't think so. Um, oh, but I will show them this. Oh, it moved over here. Ah, yeah. This there is, we go. this is, if you open the door today, this is probably what you might see if you open the door to the children's playroom. This yeah. is Not heartbreaking. Two by four constructed shelves for storage and apparently st- stacked with storage. You know, oh, yeah, I think I see toilet paper safe. rolls. It's hard to tell what's in there, but, um, and this is an older picture. I'm not sure. It's, it's pretty old, like probably within the last 10, maybe 20 years, maybe early 2000s, somewhere in there. 
Yeah. Um, but you can see what the room is used for. It's probably still used for that today. Yeah. Nothing left of the inside of the room. So sad. And that, unfortunately, is the same case with the room on the port side, which was the, the what's what they call the scroll room or the, the synagogue on board. Okay, so now I'm going to show a photo. This is credit to uh, Bill Keane of the Steamship Historical Society. Um, but this shows that same photograph on the left. On the right is the entrance to the scroll room, or as it was, entrance to the scroll room from third class. There was also a second entrance, um, let's see, from first class. And I'll show that. Yes, that's right. right. Here. So if you were first class, you would come down the first class corridor, which is this, and you were led by steward. Uh, into it and if you were second class the steward would also take you and guide you through uh, the first class corridors to take you directly to here because obviously if you're second class they don't want you wandering first class <laughs> at least not yeah. unaccompanied so you came in through here and also and, and, and I think the room only ha like occupied 23 people it was it's a very small room so yeah, you, you, you apparently didn't have all that many Jewish passengers traveling in second class or in first class Mm -hmm. So this is what you would have seen if you went through the third class entrance by the staircase. You would have walked in and seen this. And on the right, you can kind of make out the door handle for the first class entry. Oh, sure so, enough. Yep, there it is. Now, I'll let you go ahead and explain. I got several pictures here that I can swap. Well, if you, if you zoom in straight ahead, uh, we can see the arc, the Torah arc. Yep. And, and uh, can you show that that color photograph? Ah, mm -hmm. so there is the arc today. It's in the well. Actually, Alex, you you know a little bit more about this. Go ahead and and say what about the uh, the arc today. Yeah. So the arc is made. If okay, if I remember correctly, it's made of Makassar ebony, which is the the darker part, and then the lighter part is um, oak. If I remember correctly, it's a certain kind of oak. Um, and then we've got the the grill here, which is protects the scrolls. The scrolls would be laying against that uh, that that um, support in the back. And then the the grill is uh, it, so they say it's been wrought in the shape of a menorah, which means it's been shaped into the shape of a menorah. A menorah has a candle in the center, so I don't know if that's necessarily true, but it kind of looks like it. Um, and then as for where this is today, it is in the um, Magnus Collection of Jewish Art and Life. And occasionally it is put on display, but never permanently. It's usually just brought in and out. And then whenever it's not in use, they they um, put it away. And it has been refurbished. So it is actually in very good condition today. Um, they keep it very well. But that is the Torah art. Can, can you show the, um, the, the decorative uh, scrolls in that black and white? Yes. Let's see here. I have so many pictures of this room. Here we go. There we go. So I believe these are these would be the scrolls then that would be kept in the ark. Mm -hmm. and... and I believe these are the ones that are at the. Uh... Oh shoot! <laughs> Wouldn't you know? Uh, it's the uh... oh, we're so Hold prepared. <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> we come so prepared for this show. Oh my goodness! I just had it, and now I can't find it. Um, it's Long Beach. Um... Temple Israel. Temple Israel. Yeah. In in Long Beach, they they have the uh, they have these. I believe they have these scrolls. There are some other scrolls um, that are, I guess, they're not decorative. They're not like these, and they're in a little bit poor condition um, that are on board. But I believe these are the ones that, that Temple Israel has. Yes, and then I'm going to show another, a 
two more photos that um so this was provided to me almost a year ago uh by a friend of mine kevin anthony and um, he took these photos but this shows on board the queen mary a display showing one of the remaining torah scrolls mm. and then there are two breastplates the same plates that you see this man pointing to in this photograph ah yes yes so these still exist aboard the queen mary uh in a display i forget where uh but i have walked past the display before and then here's a second image again credit to my friend kevin anthony who handed this to me like a year ago when i was doing a video about it but um yeah so this is a good a good view of the breastplates I'm assuming then that those are representing the the um, the the uh, Ten Commandment stones, the, the the stone tablets. I am you have not the two sure. the two arch uh, tablets. Looks like there was even writing on them. Yeah, it's in Hebrew. Well, you can make out one of it says Queen Mary right. on it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Does the other one? I'm sure the other one might say Queen Mary somewhere, but it's yeah, Queen Mary. I think it's hard to see, but because it's, it's I'll little... I'll go for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My eyesight. Isn't it, isn't it didn't, amazing? Like didn't focus the, on that. These weren't just mass produced. They weren't just purchased at a no. you know Jewish store. These were made for the Queen Mary. One of a kind. Every everything here, everything we we see, was made for the Queen Mary's synagogue. Not and another one like. Not another one like it anywhere on earth. Yeah, it's amazing. So. So unfortunately, yeah, those are those are the two lost areas. Uh, additional lost areas that we were covering. I would love to see the these rooms restored. Oh, where'd that photo come from? I, I, <laughs> I've never seen that one before. You've never seen this one before? Oh, I yeah. don't think I don't think I. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna have to send that one to me. Yeah, I got this one on the <laughs> internet, and so um, yeah, it's it's kind of cool. You see the passengers, yeah, uh, just sitting at the at the um, uh, uh, what do you call those? Um, these <laughs> the pews, pews, the pews. There we go. Yeah. Uh, the pews were made of oak as well. Most of the room, I think, was paneled in uh, in various types of oak. Um, again, my memory is going a bit fuzzy on that, but you know there would have been cushions on the pews as well. And then I have here's another photo of no. No. I want to say the rabbi. <laughs> I <laughs> I don't know much about these this religion, but uh, and he's accessing the Torah scrolls from mm -hmm. the ark. And it looks like there. It looks like there might have been a curtain then that 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 uh, that uh, parti partitioned the ark away from the yes uh, from the room. From my understanding, the curtain was always drawn whenever there was no service happening. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Or not. Or drawn. Or or you know the curtains covered it whenever there was no service, and then when yes. they had service, they would draw them back and right okay well we've got two rooms to cover let's see if we can cover them really quick okay. and, and there really isn't very much to cover them but we're right here so we have well actually you know what yeah yeah that's fine yeah no problem yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> there we go so uh so originally if you look at like if you have the ship builder book or if you look at a, a very early 30s um deck plan of the queen mary this area of B deck is actually shown as one room. And and that was that was later decided to to make these into two separate rooms. So the port side Oh yeah, uh, I'll show them I, how it was combined. Kind right. Of. So yeah. Exactly. So this is showing how it was going to be as one room. And and that was later changed to the, the so there, yeah, there we go. Uh, the uh, so the port side uh, was referred to as the cinema, 
although it was really kind of a cinema slash lounge slash library. So these chairs that you see here, these are leather and stainless steel framed stackable chairs. Um, they weren't always arranged like this in the room. The room actually had regular tables and chairs uh, for like lounge. There we go. Thank you very much. So that's how the room would be normally. But when they were going to show films or if they had any kind of stage performance on board, and they d apparently did do live live stage performances, um, they would bring out these chairs and arrange them for like theater seating. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember I was just talking earlier about that little access. There are actually like little changing rooms there, right where he's got his uh, his cursor pointer. And then you've got a little uh, backstage area that's behind the curtain there. And that, that actually, if you go to the right behind those curtains, that leads to those changing rooms. Um, and so this room was actually, eh, I, I don't want to say duplicated, but for the most part, it was um, copied over onto the starboard side. And that was more known as the library, although there were library uh, bookcases on both sides. So I guess if you were looking for a book, you'd go to the, and it was on the port side, you could bring it over to the starboard side uh, area because it also was set up in pretty much the same way as you see here. Tables and chairs and there's the there's the bookcases. We're looking on the on the port side yeah, version this, here. Yeah, because we don't I don't have a photo of the uh, starboard side one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't yeah I didn't I didn't but either. I, I have seen the room, and I can tell everybody that it pretty much looked just like this, but on the on the you know starboard side, right? So yeah, and in fact, I think that um, the this picture, I think there were bookcases that were added after this photo was taken. Yeah, I, I might be wrong on that. There but might I have think, been yeah, that, more down another this set way. of bookcases. Yeah, and they have a uh, a uh, a rollable cover, I think, that also comes down. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. you can kind of see. Oh, oh shoot. What happened? <laughs> and they're still there. Those those little rolling uh shutters are are still in place. Uh I and I think there are shelves there, but there are no books there. Uh, this is this is actually the room that I was talking about when it came to um bars on the portholes. There are bar bars on the portholes on these on the this room and the room opposite on the starboard side. And this was the room that I would always hear a tour guide take a group into and point out that this this was a um, a prisoner of war detention cell. Absolutely not. But what I love about these rooms is that unlike most of the third class areas that were oak, like the, the smoking room was oak, the entryways were oak, the staircases were oak, this room is in cherry and mahogany and the one on the starboard side is also cherry and mahogany which i i love cherry and i love mahogany what was so the, i love the, what what is the current name of the starboard side room i can probably look it up on well i know the starboard side room i was coronia room for a time but i they have changed names in in the last few years i think so i'm not sure what it was you know, just prior to COVID. Yeah, I think it is still Coronia Room. Is it still Coronia Room? Okay. So I'll I'm just... not. Oh, uh, and Carpathia Room. And Carpathia Room. That's right. Yeah, I think I think the the port side is Carpathia Room, and the starboard side is Coronia Room. Uh... Okay. So Don't I'm hold gonna... me to that. I'm... But I think that's what it is. I think you are right, because I do remember those nameplates on the walls and going, I wonder why they named these after these other ships. Yeah. Uh, sure. and, 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 they never it, used those rooms, so nobody took a picture of them. That's, you know, that's the thing. The the, the Mauritani room, which is the, uh, the garden lounge, mm -hmm. and these two rooms, the Carpathia room and the Coronia room, um, only once in a great while is there like a, an event that go, go, takes place in there? It's usually a, a meeting room, you know, mm -hmm. set up with a, with a table and a whole bunch of chairs. Um, but for the most part, they're always dark. Yeah. You know, the doors are locked. They're not used. 
and 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 I love it when they're accessible. I love to go inside them just just to walk inside them because they're mostly um, still original in there. Like yeah, the walls yeah, yeah, they the are. Bookcases, everything is still in there. Exactly. Uh, and and I'll give you a little secret. In the go back to the other one, to the other room, the other picture. Which the this one yes, or the better okay. one? Yes. Okay. So so if you go, this is the the port side, the the Carpathia room today. So we're looking forward, and all the way at the forward end on the right of that on that bulkhead is a door. There's not a door here now, but there's a door now. I mean, to, to, there's another door in this <laughs> photograph, but there is a door there now, and that is the door that leads forward into B deck into the forward section. And mm -hmm. I don't know how it is today. It was very easy to open that door, even though it might have been technically locked. It was always an easy door to get into. <laughs> yeah, he's he's just there. Not that I not his, that I would recommend that you go into areas you guys <laughs> Right, <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm gonna show the um, the port side room uh, as it looked, or as it it kind of looks. Technically, it does kind of look like this today when there's nothing happening in there. Yeah, yeah. So you're looking at the uh, you're looking aft now, um, where the stage and the the uh, projection screen would would have been in that other previous shot. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. But yeah, they're still there. So if you guys have a chance, if next time you go to the Queen Mary, if you go on B deck to either the Corona or Carpathia rooms, if there's no one in them, sometimes they have the doors open and you can just walk right on in and look inside. They didn't when I was there, uh, but, yeah. you know, but sometimes they do. And th this is one of the few places where you can see an original third class area that even though it's without furniture, um, well, for yeah. the most part. Uh, and then. An interesting thing, I'm just. This is my last thing I'm going to point out. Yeah. Um. This is most likely a 1930s. I think this is a 1936 photo. See the uh, light fixtures. Yeah. How they're square. Now yeah. go to the other picture, the color one. Oh, Completely yeah. different ceiling fixtures. They're kind of this tubular shape. Yeah, they are. Yeah. They look plastic. Yeah. That's for certain. And of course, now today, none of that exists. None of those light fixtures exist. They're all modern day, you know, Home Depot. Oh, look what ceiling you can, look what you can see. Oh, the uh, the Greek key pattern. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, uh, that's what I'm looking for. The the raised ceiling. The um. The oh boy, brain's not functioning. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, that's still there. That is still there today. That's a kind of an interesting little touch because you don't really see that everywhere on the ship. No. Uh, I mean, that's a third class thing. In fact, what's interesting is, is that the pattern for the third class uh, uh, China was a Greek key pattern. For, for Queen Mary? Mm-hmm. I did not know they had separate uh, China. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Because I have seen a Greek key pattern, but I thought that was an Aquitania key pattern. Now there, now there is a there is one that has like gold leaf into it and stuff that that came from uh, that was used on Mauritania, Aquitania, Berengaria, mm -hmm. and and I believe it's actually more like a second class pattern. Okay. But third class on Queen Mary actually had a black and white. It was it was ivory ware with the it was just a black. Um, Greek key pattern with like uh, I think it was like bunches of olives like every you know every so often along the outer edge I wish I had a picture to show you I, I don't I feel like I've seen it before honestly I, th I think yeah. I've seen it before I just I don't have the picture of it but that's and pretty cool very interestingly the, uh, the oh the it's not the Lido restaurant but well it was it the Lido restaurant on the QE2, uh, all the way until her any well, actually they still use it in Dubai. They still have the same china that uh, that they use in that uh, Lido restaurant, but it's green. But it was done. It was inspired by the third class china pattern. 
Wow. That's so cool. This is little history stuff that you don't even really expect. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at that photo to see if there was anything original in there. But yeah, this is the starboard side room. And I don't see anything original in there. Yeah. This might even Looks like they were just This might even be the wrong room to be honest, because there's a curvature here. You know what? Is that the garden lounge? I think this is the garden lounge. Yeah, that's the starboard side of the garden lounge. Oops. Wrong folder. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's like a weird curvature there. I'm like, I don't think that curvature yeah, you, was there. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Well. Um, and so I think that's... Did we reach the end? I think we reached the end. Uh, was there... There was something forward of, of here. There was a... um. Where's my... Mail room. room. No. That that would that would lead into the mail room. No. Oh, well, you have, the, you have the hat. Was. Yeah. Oh, that's right. For some reason, I thought there was another um, lounge here. I, d I don't know why nope. I thought that. That was weird. See that little uh, spot that says vent units? So imagine a door right there oh. um, in that upper left-hand upper corner. Move your hand up. A little bit right up oh. uh, right there okay so imagine a door there leading into that space oh that's the door you were talking about the very end of the room right right and see that that little door that goes into that spot that says vent units yeah hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of punk louvers are in there or at least used to be i'm i seriously doubt they've been moved <laughs> just tons of punk louvers jeez yeah <laughs> anyways yeah. so that's that's it We'll have to come up with our next theme. I don't, I don't even know where we're going to go, go next. Well, there's so much more to cover. There's just so much. It's Yeah, it's never ending. Uh, That's it's true. never ending. <laughs> so it's like there's just, you know, but this is great. But um, but for folks that are wondering why we didn't cover uh, the third class dining room, we already covered that in our very first episode, which was about the dining spaces on, on our deck of the Queen Mary. So I would go all the way back to that. Um, and I'll have to create a a special playlist just for these episodes because it was it's going on longer than i thought it would which is good because there's a lot to talk about but um but yeah for now you can see the this playlist is on my live streams playlist so far and it's also on um I think my everything about anything playlist. So I know it's broken up, but it's on those two and I'll, I'll create a separate playlist that has only Queen Mary's lost and abandoned places on it. That way you can go one by one, see each episode. <clears throat> but yes, so that folks is the third class spaces on Queen Mary. And there's still a lot more to cover about the Queen Mary. <laughs> like it is ridiculous, but stay, yeah, stay tuned for the next, <laughs> the next topic. Cause I don't even know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, we still have to cover swimming pools. We still have to cover, um, ah, yes. we still have to cover machinery spaces. Um, you know, we have sports deck. We have, there's areas on the sun deck I want to cover because we never really talked about it. Oh, we've got, uh, the, the, the dog kennels and the, yeah. uh, the squ the squash courts and, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah. We got all that, you know, um, we have, uh, well, we already did cargo holds, but, um, but yeah, there's, there's, and there's a lot to cover, but yeah, it's, we'll get to it one by one. And I even wanted you to talk at some point about the ventilation on the ship, because you, you and I had a great conversation about the three different types of ventilation, like air conditioning the ship had. So, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> so that would have been a cool, a cool episode to do too. So. Um, but anyway, I'm going to end the live stream now. Um, I wanted to thank Steve for, you know, for, again, showing up and teaching us a bunch of stuff that, frankly, I'd never heard before. And I know a lot of people here haven't. Um, so thank I you, have, Steve. I have fun. My pleasure. And everyone, uh, all right. We will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Just waiting for the stream.